Hi friends, I am James Clancy, Head of Developer Relations here at Locify. Recently, we launched Locify Lightning, and you know what? We don't have enough content to show you how to use it. So today, I'm gonna to work on a full end-to-end -end tutorial to where we take you from a design, convert it into code, and make it live. So, let's jump in. To start, I'm going to use a design that I found on Figma's site. This is just a community file that someone has posted and it looks like a great intro file for me to use. Um, so I'll put a link to this inside the YouTube description so anyone can download and try it out. But let's just jump into Figma. Here it is. So this design is great. Um, I did go through and rename a couple layers. There's some things like that that just to clean it up. Most of this design is not grouped, which is fine, but it's gonna show off some of the cool features in Locify Lightning because it will actually clean that up for us because some of the stuff and just how it doesn't follow the same flow order. Um, it's okay. It doesn't matter. We can take care of that. So I'm going to launch Locify Lightning. If you haven't used Locify before, you probably have to go into the plugins and search for Locify. Of course I have. So it's right there in my recents. So I'll just load that up. To start, I'm going to create a new project. For this project, I'm going to do a mobile web app. Or sorry, a mobile, yeah, not mobile, a web app. And I am going to use React. And I like the defaults as is, looks great. And I'm just gonna click Create. Project's created. Now let's click Let's Go. So the first thing it's gonna ask me is, which screen am I gonna convert? I want to convert this landing page. So I'll just select that, click Convert. You'll notice it did say five frames because it does need to convert these icons that are used by it. So it's just gonna go through, scan, and convert everything. And we're loaded. All right. Let's jump in and check this code out. I'm gonna go straight to full screen code. And you can see that we have a landing page and this landing page actually has barely any code. It's because Locify went through and grouped everything into sections and then created components for those sections. So we do have global broker frame, frame with three children. We did our best at naming it since we didn't give it any hints whatsoever. Did an okay job. We'll clean all that up though. All right, so super excited, exciting. You can see all the different components that were made and what went into them, the corresponding CSS module, but that code looks great. We're just gonna use it. So I'm gonna minimize this all the way. And a couple other things that Locify did for us, you'll notice how it's responsive. That's awesome. And it did things really well. Okay, perfect. All right, I love it. So let's jump in. And okay, as we're clicking on it, we'll notice that's text. Technically those should be links, so we can fix that. Um, yeah, that's also not input, so we'll fix that. And I, some of this, as it was rescaling, didn't quite do things exactly how I would want, so we'll clean that up. Yeah, that's an issue. Let's clean that up. All right, so to begin, I'm gonna click straight into edit mode. We could look through the decisions that were made here, but there's a couple things we know we want to fix. So let's just go back to default. If I go into edit, I can now click on any element in here. Awesome. Look, it wasn't tagged as anything, exactly as we thought. So let's just turn it into a link. At this page point, I don't have any other pages. I could just tell it to an auto navigate to this next page. So that way it could just do it automatically for us, all the navigation, but you know what? Turning it into a link is good enough. And let's do this one, link, done. Oops, I already had it there, let's click link. All right, almost done tagging them all. This is also a link, and we'll call that good, all right. And we can't go through and check other things, right? This um, is a button. Exactly, you are correct, sir. Let's click on this. And I was already into the details. We'll notice this was not tagged. So we will tag this as an input field. Perfect. You're an input now, thank you. All right, going down the list, these images just weren't resizing right. So I wanna fix that. What we're going to do is you'll notice that there's something weird, and I can tell you exactly what the issue is. It's the image heights, right? The image heights are kind of fixed, which makes it to where ratio stuff can't do right, 
or can't resize right. So we can fix that. And it's really noticeable if we make this like, you can see how we've got the blue border and that's just not filling right. I don't like it. So we're gonna go into responsiveness and this is why, fixed height. It's not a fixed height. However, inside of Figma, there's only two options, fixed and fill. But guess what we can do? We can add a property and we can make the height auto. It's now going to use that for our designs. Super awesome. Thank you. That makes me happy. Um, perfect. We'll just do that for each of these. Oop, not auto. Height. You'll notice it did give me options. Get that one in there. Oops, I did not save that one. Let's make sure we save it before I click away. Um, height. Auto. Save. And let's do that one as well. Edit. Advanced. No, I only need one. Height and auto. Save and done. All right, so now those are going to work a little bit better for us. Perfect. Now, as we noticed, some of the names I didn't really like. It's kind of weird. So let's go back. I pressed the wrong button, so we're just going to now click view code. All right, so now let's click into code and properties. And there it is, frame with three children. Let's rename that. Let's rename this to um, that instance. We are going to change that name to be recent projects. Click save. And now code was regenerated with the correct name. That's going to be a lot better. We can go through and change each of these if we wanted, but I think that's good. Um, property. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Um, we can do view all instances of it. Yep. Click on it. We've got our vector name, title, description, stars. I like it. It's good enough for us to work with. All right. So we don't need to save anything because we didn't actually change anything. I like it. Um, I think we've done enough to make this to where it'll work quite well. Let's jump in and see how it did. I'm going to click done. At this point, um, we could check more of the options. We'll see everything that was tagged. Um, as we kind of clicked through that earlier, we now have links added in there and input field. Awesome, awesome. It did do some, um, some layer names. Did the best of the ability that it could based off the information it was given. If you don't give it much information, i.e. no hints by nothing, by what the content is inside, it can be kind of hard for it. Um, so we'll use like the text labels. Oh, contact us. Okay, of course we'll name it contact us because it had content in it named content or contact us. So we will take hints and cues from that. And um, as you saw, we created the different properties. Let's just continue to build them now. So what this is going to do is we're going to sync it to the Locify Builder. Now, Locify Builder is a staging ground. It's not an editor. A lot of people think that it is an editor, but it is not. It's a staging ground where we can take the code from Figma, put it into Builder, and now we can continue tweaking it if we'd like. We can change properties. Um, that naming I just did where I renamed the component, I can do that right inside of Builder. So if I forgot to do it there, don't worry about it. Do it in Builder. And we can clean code up here. But this is kind of like your staging ground. Let's make sure that everything is the way we want it before we push it to GitHub or download it and run it or whatever our workflow is. It allows us to view the actual prototype. So this is uh, everything you can see what's interactive and what's not. That works now. I can actually type. Awesome. Um, we can play with the responsiveness and see how beautifully those, that, yeah, look at that. Those work so much better now. I like it. All right. So just place in here to clean it up. You can even now click share prototype. And if I sent that link to you, you could then view and interact and deal with this. So if you're working with a client, send it over to them. Let them interact with it and see how it actually works before you go ahead and spend all this time building and coding it. Five minutes later, you have a working prototype you can send to your customer. That's just exciting to me. Um, 
at this point, I don't want to change anything. I want to keep it TypeScript, but I could change it and have it regenerate everything. Like I said, I can work on the components and I can create more or I can change things, but you know what? We did all that. It's ready to go. So let's just go straight to exporting. At this point, I could download the zip. We could do that. We could instead, um, let's just send it to GitHub, right? That's what I work off of. I work in GitHub. All right. So click sync to GitHub. I'm now logged in. So I'm going to, at this point, let's just create a brand new repo and try this thing out. So I am going to call this one real estate landing page demo. And we'll just say confirm. Shows all the code that it's going to sync. And I'm now going to click push to GitHub. Preparing, sending, pushing. That easy. My code is now on GitHub. As soon as that's done pushing, it will then open it in, or it'll tell us, and we'll just open that code and go look at it. All right, it's done. So let's go over and we're gonna click on go to repository. It's just gonna load it up into GitHub, perfect. I love GitHub desktop, so I'm gonna use that. It's gonna launch the app, I'll just say, yep, that works great, let's clone it. Beautiful thing about this, it instantly clones, and from there, I can just say open in VS Code. Now that is why I love GitHub Desktop. Just great. All right, so the code we created, um, it did, I didn't wanna be editing that. I'm just, before we start playing with this, I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm just gonna do npm i. And let, while that's going, we'll just check out this app. Um, it did create the app and it's pointing directly to the landing page, which is perfect for the root. Um, couple things that I'm going to want to do in here. We're just gonna go directly into, we have our property. And our property has this property type, which is really, really, really exciting. We're good to go. We have our properties that were created out. From there, we renamed that one group to recent projects. So now we know we can go to recent projects and still getting errors because NPM still restoring. Um, and next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna to wanna to change the code in here. Before it does that though, let's just run this thing. npm run start. Dun, 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 dun. Our page is now running locally for us. <laughs> that just makes me happy. It really, really does. It's going in, making components, tying into things. It's just awesome. Clickable. I'm happy. Things like that make me happy. Okay. All right. This is awesome. We've got our project. Our web page is running. I love it. Let's go back to VS Code and let's edit this thing and do, make it do a little bit more, more of what we'd want it to do. As I mentioned, we want to take these properties and make them to where they're kind of data bound. I don't like just having them just instantiating the components, right? That's not how you actually write code. So this is sample code. So this will work for what we're gonna do. Our goal is just gonna do const properties. And now we're gonna say it's an equals array. And here property is not what I want. I wanna turn it into property type. Perfect. And we're gonna close that. Oops, wrong close. I can type, I promise. So once that's closed, we'll parenthesis it, and I am going to give this a second. I love CodePilot. What it did is it stripped all of that data out for us. Did I not need those? All right, there we go. Fixed it. All right. So now that we have that code written, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to our properties and where that was at. As beautiful as that is, <laughs> did I mention that I love CodePilot? Yeah, that's exactly what I just wanted to do. <laughs> okay, so if I save that, let's go <laughs> run this thing and let's go look at it. We now have six of them. Beautiful. It's what I wanted. All right, so let's go back and let's delete these ones we don't want. 
So we have now just taken our prototype, used our components, data bound stuff. Granted, you can pull this from, from your web service instead or a database. So instead it actually will grab that data. That data looks great. And then we populate it. Yeah, perfect. I love it. We now have our app up and running. Um, we can push it to GitHub, chain, update our changes. Just so beautiful. Thank you, Copilot, for making that even better of a demo. And uh, we're great. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. There's going to be more tutorials like this coming. So I'm excited. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Bye.